I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who hasn't at least heard of My Hero Academia. Released as a manga back in July 2014 by mangaka Kohei Horikoshi, and later adapted into the notorious anime it is today, My Hero Academia has been around for a long time. While many think it has ran its course and it should end, I respectfully disagree. My Hero Academia has had 5 seasons so far, with an upcoming 6th and most likely a 7th and 8th season being its last. While this seems reasonable for an anime only viewer right now, as 2-3 to three more seasons is plenty of time to wrap up the series, manga readers know painfully too well that this isn't the case. Pacing is something MHA never really had an issue with in the manga. The show had some pacing issues in season 5 where scenes and moments were just cut completely, but the manga never really suffered from these issues. That was until the Meta Liberation War arc. While the arc itself is paced fine, it's one aspect within it that foreshadows how rushed the pacing would be going forward. That being Deku's new quirks. Black Whip was paced well as we see Deku actually learning the quirk and slowly but eventually mastering it. We don't see this with his other quirks at all. Float is mentioned briefly before the war and Deku uses it in his fight against Shigaraki. We then get a flashback to him learning how to use it. Already quite strange but it had made for an interesting moment where Deku saves everyone from a wave of decay so I'll allow it. But his next three quirks were paced horribly. Danger Sense came seemingly out of nowhere during the end of the war arc. Smokescreen was used in the muscular rematch and completely skips him having to learn the quirk. And Fa Jin appears out of nowhere. Danger Sense could have been better if they did some more foreshadowing with it. We see Deku unknowingly use it with this lightning symbol that appears, but he immediately figures it out and knows of the quirk. We could have gotten scenes of Deku getting a headache or something, just to lead us to make the discovery alongside the character. Deku's quirks just kind of feel like new tools in his arsenal, and while I'm glad Horikoshi made the quirks not too OP, I wish that they were better implemented. I highly recommend you guys watch Oceana's video on the topic. I'll link it in the description. Also, sorry for saying your name wrong, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Deku's quirks were only a glimpse into the next few arcs issues though. I'm not going to be really ripping the arcs apart because truth be told I enjoyed them. What I haven't enjoyed is how it feels like the story is sprinting to its conclusion. The final arc is pretty much here now, with so much left not resolved or covered. Some examples being the origin and history of quirks, Nezu's backstory, Gentle Criminal and La Brava, Hisashi Midoriya, Deku's father, Stain's location after meeting with All Might, the state of Mr. Compress after his mediocre reveal during the war arc, the discrimination aspect of the MHA world, which is teased with characters like Spinner, and Overhaul's fate after the villain hunt arc and Deku's promise to him. And those are only some of the examples. There's a good few I haven't included because I have hopes by the end of the series they'll be resolved. But like, I don't know how you can possibly resolve all of these in the last few chapters after the final battle. I guess there's some aspects that we'll never really get an answer or a resolution to, which sucks, but there's nothing we can do about that. I want to briefly talk about how cramped the latter half of the war arc feels, because I think it's where the pacing starts to become noticeably rushed. After the Dobby is Toya reveal, we get some of his backstory, which is good, but then we get the reveal that Best Genist is alive and that Hawks didn't kill him. We see the return of Lamillion, we get Bakugo's hero name, which has been hyped up for a while. And we get Mr. Compress's face reveal and extremely brief backstory. These are all interesting reveals in their own right, but they lose a lot of their impact by being crammed together, as they all happen within like four chapters. While the story itself is being rushed, some characters are also being rushed, the main one being Mirio Togata. Mirio was rendered quirkless by Overhaul after he sacrificed his quirk to save Eri. This went on for a while and created a pretty cool father-daughter dynamic between both Mirio and Eri. It made the eventual return of Lamillion exciting because we knew he was eventually coming back once Eri had mastered her quirk. But nope, out of nowhere during the war arc, Lamillion returns to punch a few Nomu and never be seen again. A character hyped up as this person capable of surpassing Deku and becoming the number one hero, who had one of the most noble moments in the series reduced to a background character. Not even a background character. An afterthought, we've seen both Sun Eater and Nezre since, the other two members of the big three, and he's just... Mirio's just not there. 
One of my favourite characters, Tomura Shigaraki, didn't leave this change of pace unscathed either. It's established through arcs like the Shai Hazaikai and My Villain Academia arcs that Shigaraki cares about his fellow League members. He isn't some whiny spoiled brat like he was at the beginning of the series, and he wasn't some cold Nomu like he is now. He cared about Toga, Twice, Spinner, Compress, Dobby, even their broker Giron. He cared and respected all of them. Yet after the death of Twice during the war arc, nothing. No emotion, no acknowledgement, nothing. A total contrast to how he was before the arc. You can chalk this up to him changing after gaining his new quirks and undergoing that surgery, but I think it's kind of sad to see them leave out this reaction to the news that one of his closest friends was killed by a spy that they trusted. This lack of character reaction since the war is common with a lot of characters it seems. It's strange how almost no one bats an eye at Endeavor after Toy is broadcast, and it's even stranger how unimportant Deku's secret being revealed was. Toga also doesn't fare too well against this pacing shift. After getting left behind after the war, we barely see anything she does on her own. It's just completely glossed over, and she just reappears with the League. While on the topic of villains, I know that they desperately want Shigaraki to be redeemed, but do we seriously still need All For One? With every chapter, it seems he's the one who's orchestrated practically everything. Shigaraki is coming across as more of a victim, but like, he's still supposed to be the main antagonist. So having All For One still around doesn't really do many favours for Shigaraki's image. Same kind of goes for All Might. I think it would have been better motivation if All Might died during the prison break at the hands of Shigaraki, and if Shigaraki then proceeded to kill All For One as well. Would have made Shigaraki his own person rather than a vessel for All For One, and it would have also given Deku another reason to go solo during the villain hunt arc. I'd much rather an All Might vestige talking to Deku than have All Might sit around babysitting Eri at UA. A lot of creators in the anime community believe the story is being rushed, and while it's mainly just speculation, I have to agree with them. With how Act 1 and Act 2 spanned years, it's incredibly odd how the final act of the series is set to end this year. It feels like we're only getting the cliff notes of Act 3, rather than the entirety of it, and there could be a legitimate explanation for that. For those who don't know, MHA is published in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine in Japan. In each issue of the magazine, there's a survey you're asked to fill out where you rank your top three chapters that were in that issue. If a manga is consistently not in that top three, it generally gets the axe. With the magazine being consumed by more casual fans, you can imagine the effects this system has on story investment. Arcs like the Forest Training Camp were originally a lot more ambitious, but had to be substantially trimmed down due to the popularity tanking once the villains arrived. My Villain Academia received mixed ratings weekly, and even entire backstories were cut, which was the case for Lady Nagant. Take this all with a grain of salt, because I can't confirm this. This is all stuff I've learned over the internet, so it could not be true, you never know. But I believe this to be true. In conclusion, I kind of wish the story was given a few more arcs in its final act. It feels significantly shorter when compared to the first and second act, and the story is really suffering from it. But hey, that's just my opinion. I hope you enjoyed. I'll promise I'll try to upload more this year. Thanks for watching, and have yourselves a good one.